So why? Why? Why did I let Alan and Edward take over the party? God knows what they're going to do. Oh, I'm afraid we all get carried away. Uh, I'm one of the culprits, too, dear. I'm oh, sorry. Come on, Lila. No, you're not to blame. If anyone's at fault, it's Alan. He hasn't been in the best of moods lately, huh. has he? I think the pressure of his work is getting to him. Well, it serves him right. It actually does. I mean, he's been rubbing in the fact that I folded at the very same job. Oh, nonsense, dear. You merely preferred surgery to administration. And besides, you can handle the pressure. You're married to a quartermain. Which is not exactly a piece of cake. I know, dear. I'm married to one, too. Well, I think I'll go and lie down. Are you all right? Oh, I'm a little tired. Um, may I say something? Sure, of course. A little while ago, you mentioned fun. <laughs> now, I have a suggestion. Why don't you find a way to have fun all by yourself? Hmm? You're a very nice person to be with. Yeah, but I think it's more fun when there's two people. Well, pretend who the other one is. Favorite juice. Hi, Alice. What can I bring you? Uh, iced tea, please. Okay, coming right up. I'm glad you're here. It was impossible to talk at the complex with all those people there. Gregory, look, I like you very much, and I admire you. And I think you're terrific. You've been wonderful with your sign, that part that you wanted to give to the city, and that big building that you just gave to Felicia. Yes, but. But you're married. I don't want to get involved any further. Well, can't we go on seeing each other like this? No. I don't want a backstreet romance. I don't want to sneak in another motel. It wouldn't be that way. I don't want that either. You're a married man. There you go. My wife and I have led separate lives for almost ten years. Then why did you stay together? For Greg's sake. Didn't work, did it? He still had problems. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be cruel. That's all right. You're right. I'm sorry I'm not going to blame my wife because it was as much my fault as hers. We don't have to say goodbye. We can keep on enjoying each other. I don't mean in bars and motels. I want to spend time with you. We can be alone and have our privacy. Now, look at me. Tell me that you don't want that, too. Been on a camping trip, gone hiking somewhere. Anybody? Yeah. Anybody ever been through basic training and gone for a 15 mile hike? Full combat fatigues. Here's the guy who knows what I'm talking about. With a field pack, weighed about 50 pounds on your back. And invariably, a sergeant always finds a swamp for you to go through. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of the Mojave Desert, there's a swamp. And here you are trudging along. And I'll tell you something. If you stop and look back with all that weight and all that muck, I guarantee you, you're going to get stuck. The reason I'm saying this is because all that excess baggage and all that muck and mire is your past. Those things that you refuse to let go of. So what I mean is that you need to let go of all of that stuff that's weighing you down. I mean, let go of all those things in your past that are holding you back. Because 
brooding about it, worrying about it, and kicking yourself in the head about it is not going to help. You need to live in the present and look forward to the future and leave the past where it belongs. Because you can't, you can't look forward to the future and you can't focus on the present if you're looking back at what might have been. You're thinking about your failures and, and your lost love. is here. It's within our grasp. We can make of the future whatever we want. But you got to be willing to let go. Thank you. Come in. Hi. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Why? Well, I don't know. You just seem kind of distracted. No, I think you're just being overly sensitive to me and everything that's been going on. No, I'm not. Everybody, including you, keeps reminding me of everything that I've been through. But you've been through far worse than I have. Do you want to talk about it? No, not really. Do you want me to wait outside? No, no, that's all right. You go on ahead. Okay. Well, if you'd like to talk... I'm no, fine. really. I'm fine. Okay, if you change your mind, I'll be at home. down for a nap. What in the world are you doing? Well, I am trying to find the perfect dress to wear to the Quartermain's dinner party tomorrow night. Lucy, I don't know that Tony is going to want to go with you after the awful things you said about him this afternoon. Whose side are you on anyway? I'm not on anybody's side, but girl, it's getting late. What is that supposed to mean? It's late and your husband isn't home. And I think, frankly, he's staying away on purpose because he's sick of the ugly fight you've been having. He's sick of them. Aunt Charlene, what about me? I'm sick, too, you know. I, what am I supposed to be feeling here, you know? My, my marriage feels like it's completely on the line. I, I don't know why I even married the man now. He was supposed to be my ticket to respectability. You know, I was going to really be somebody with him. Honey, you are and I was going to be wearing stable coats and driving in limo-driven now. Cars. And now I've got a damn daycare center, a bunch of dirty diapers, and a man who doesn't have any ambition at all. Now, that is not yes, true. Yes, it is true. It's true, and you know it. Lucy, you're being entirely self-centered. I am not. You certainly are. Now, you calm down and you listen to me. You were wrong to shove yourself in front of the spotlight. I was not! You were at the award ceremony. And shoving Tony in that way, my gosh, the man's just buried his so brother. Aunt Charlene, so what? give him some time to mourn! Well, I hate his brother. I hate Frisco Jones. Lucy, don't even say that. Well, I do. You don't even understand. That man almost ruined my life. I mean, I could be married right now 
to Kevin. I could be rich and I could be very, very happy. Well, I hate Frisco. I hate him and I'm very glad he's dead. when you went up there. And he was in the bedroom with the door locked. Uh-oh. Oh, that means he's going to come down when he's good and ready to. And he may never get good and ready to after the mean things you said. Actually, he will, he will be down before Oh, yeah, long. I think you've really blown it this time. That's what I think. I think you ought to go back upstairs, get down on your hands and knees in front of that door, and beg him to forgive you for what the things you said. Just be quiet, because I know how to handle... Tony, wait a minute. You stop. I can explain what I said. I didn't mean that You know, the way. great thing in all this is that I'm older. I don't have to listen to you explain anything anymore. Now, I want BJ to be with her godmother, so I'm taking her to Bobby's. And then I'm going out of town, and I want you to look for a place while I'm out of town because I don't want you in this house when I get back. Got it? Who's going on vacation? Oh, uh, nobody. It was just a cult and we got to run strange before the show today, and he was boarding some of that in Greek. God. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought it was a little odd. He was, uh, I tried to calm him down and get him out of and get his mind back on the show, but it seems to me the word had something to do with Felicia, so we got a little crazed, you know? He seems very distracted during the show, too. Yeah. Really? Well, he cares an awful lot about Felicia. He didn't want anything to happen to her. You know, earlier today, Sean tried to warn me not to rush into things with Colton. He did? Yeah. Why? Well, he said that when two people go through what we've been through, that their bond can be mistaken. For something else like love. I think that's what he meant. Well, he does have a point. Yeah. But I think I finally realized that my feelings for him are deeper than what... I would care to admit, and I think about him a lot, too. 